In this video, I want to address some of the comments and concerns that I've gotten on previous videos about the Canon EOS M. Now, if you don't know anything about this camera, the Canon EOS M or Magic Lantern or anything like that, definitely check out some of the videos I have linked in the description. But essentially, I've made a bunch of videos about this camera, and today I want to address some of the comments and concerns that I've gotten and hopefully clear up some of the most asked questions about this camera. So without further ado, let's get into the first comment. All right, comment number one, does it have any kind of image stabilization? So the Canon EOS M does not have any built-in image stabilization. However, if you do have lenses that have it built-in, it'll still work with the Magic Lantern hack. So for example, the kit lens that comes with this camera, it's like a 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens with OSS, that'll still work with this camera and any other lens that has built-in stabilization. But no, the camera itself does not have any sort of built-in stabilization. All right, next up, this is pretty much the most commented thing on all of my videos about this camera in some sort of way, shape, or form. And so that is essentially the fact that this camera can only record raw video or specifically 5K raw video for like three seconds at a time. And so I directly tested that and I went to 5K 24 frame per second mode on this camera, the one that I recommend in pretty much all my other videos about it. I threw on a lens, threw in a battery and hit record and it essentially went until it filled up the entire SD card. It was almost an hour straight of recording. It never hit any sort of record limit. It didn't overheat and it never stopped recording it kept going with 5K 24 frame per second mode for almost an hour straight. So to clear that up, this does not record 5K for one second or two seconds or three seconds or anything like that. It's a continuous recording mode as long as you use the correct SD card. Now the SD card I use is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 gigabyte. I'll link this exact one down in the description if you do want to get this card, if you're looking to buy this camera, if you already have one. This card works perfect for me. I have never had any issues specifically with this SD card. And so I guess the question is, is why is everybody commenting that it can't record for very long in this 5k mode if it actually does? And the answer to that question is Magic Lantern is always being updated, always being improved. And a couple years ago I actually owned this camera and I tested Magic Lantern on it. This was probably in 2019 and it had way 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 more issues than it does now. It was really a fraction of what it is now on the most updated Magic Lantern firmware with this camera. And so I'm guessing most people that think that have seen videos about it in the past or have tried it in the past since this software been out for quite a few years now. And it probably didn't have as many modes and in any higher frame rate or high resolution modes, I'm sure it had bunch of issues like pink frames and just not being able to record for very long with it. And so all those concerns are 100% valid and I understand everybody's criticism with this if they have seen videos about it in the past where that was an issue. But with the current Magic Lantern firmware, using this camera with the right SD card, you can record 5K 12-bit 24 frame per second video for essentially as long as you need to. That was one of the most popular comments I've been getting on all my videos about this camera, so I really hope that cleared it up a little bit for you. But next up, is this camera full frame? No, this camera is not full frame. The EOS M has a standard Super 35 or APS-C size sensor. However, in most of the recording modes, it crops in even more depending on what resolution you use. So essentially with the Magic Lantern firmware, this camera is anything from an APS-C size sensor all the way down to the actually usable part of the sensor that it's using it might be even smaller than a micro four thirds size or something like that. But long story short, no, this isn't full frame. This camera has an APS-C size sensor. All right, next up, this is another pretty popular comment I get is about overheating. Does this camera overheat? How long does it take before it overheats? And a lot of people that actually had issues specifically with it overheating. Now I do want to say with my testing and my use of this camera, it has never directly overheated on me and been an issue where, you know, it powered off from overheating or stopped recording from overheating or anything like that. Now the issue with overheating is that every single situation is going to be different. You know, the climate you're in is going to be different. The equipment, you know, what's around your camera, if there's a cage on it or other things that are helping block the heat and keep it into the camera. That could cause more overheating. If there's direct sunlight beaming on it, that could cause overheating. There are so many factors that have to do with, you know, whether a camera overheats or not that I, this one, I don't want to specifically answer this directly and say this will not overheat. However, for all the time that I've been using this camera, I have not had it personally overheat on me. Now I live in Michigan. So right now, especially the climate's pretty cold and most of the time it doesn't get extremely warm or humid here. But for all the questions asking if this camera will overheat, like I just said I did do that test recording 5k video with this camera continuously for almost an hour and the camera did not overheat for me and that was in about a 68 degree Fahrenheit room and this is another thing that possibly in older Magic Lantern firmwares there were issues with the overheating however I will say to be careful of it and if you live in a super hot environment I would not at all be surprised if this camera were to overheat 
So something to think about, however, it's not a super big issue like some people think it is. And it's not something that would be a deal breaker for most people, again, unless you live in a super, super, super hot environment, then you might have some issues. Cause again, this is a firmware hack. This camera was never meant to record raw video or 5K or 4K or 2.5K, any other modes that Magic Lantern can do with this. This camera was not meant for. So any overheating that happens, it's understandable because you're pushing this so far past its limits. But again, this is so circumstantial that it's gonna be directly related to your situation specifically. All right, next up, does it have a video time limit? And I'm guessing this means does it have a recording limit, which no, this does not. So a lot of mirrorless and DSLR cameras do have a 30 minute recording time limit. And some older DSLR cameras even have a shorter, like a 10 or a 20 minute time limit. So let's say you're recording a super long conference. It's like an hour long conference and you want just one take. Those cameras, you'd have to every 30 minutes hit record again after it automatically stops recording. You'll probably miss a couple seconds in between. And so I'm guessing that's what this comment was about because this camera actually does have that recording limit normally. However, with the Magic Lantern firmware hack, no, this camera does not have a recording limit. You can essentially record until your battery dies, until your SD card runs out or something like that. However long you need to, you can record with this camera. All right, next up, 5K 12-bit, but at what frame rate is the video? So there is a 5K mode that only records 20 frames per second. And there's also some concerns about the 5K mode being like 10 frames per second or 15 frames per second or something like that. And again, that's another concern that in older firmwares of Magic Lantern, it probably was a lower frame rate like that in high resolutions. And there is another 5K mode in this that is 20 frames per second, which isn't really usable for regular motion. It would look really choppy if I did anything like this. However, there is a 5K 12-bit 24 frame per second mode, which is the one that I regularly recommend. And this is 24 frames per second. So it's gonna be a normal frame rate, standard video, and you're not gonna have any issues with a super low frame rate choppy video. Our next up, does it have a front facing viewfinder? Now I'm guessing this means a flip screen so you can, you know, vlog with it and have the screen facing you. This camera does not, the screen on the back is completely fixed. You can't tilt it, you can't move it. You can't adjust it all. It's just the screen on the back right here. And so if you're recording yourself vlogging or doing, you know, something like what I'm doing right here, you're gonna need an external monitor to be able to actually see yourself. All right, next up, I've got one. It's cheap made, awful touch screen, extremely small battery, dead format of lens mount that Canon killed after a year. Don't buy it. All right, this one definitely has some truth to it. The lens mount Canon used with this camera, the Canon EFM mount, they literally used it for, I don't know exactly how many years, of course. I mean, from this camera all the way until a couple years ago, they pretty much just killed it. They haven't really released much, even between that time frame of six, seven, or eight years or something like that. They released a super small amount of lenses. There's a decent amount of third-party lenses, but Canon themselves barely released any lenses for this mount. You know, they released a couple cameras with the mount, and then they essentially transitioned to the EOS R mount. And they did officially announced that they are killing off this lens mount. Now I could see that being an issue for some people. However, for me personally, and I think most people that are gonna use this camera with Magic Lantern for recording raw video, I don't think this lens mount is very much of an issue. And here's why. So of course, this would have been so much better if they did put the new R mount on this. And if you can mount all the new RF lenses onto this, that would be amazing. However, the Canon EFM mount is still a mirrorless lens mount that you can adapt almost any vintage lens or any DSLR lens to pretty much the same as you'd be able to adapt anything to the Canon EOS R mount or a Sony E mount or anything like that. Those are all super short flange distance mirrorless camera mounts. And so if you're adapting vintage lenses, which I highly recommend using with this camera with Magic Lantern for getting that really organic film feel to it, the difference between the Canon EOS M mount and the RF mount on the newer Canon cameras essentially makes no difference. The flange distance is almost the same and you can pretty much get all the same adapters for Canon EF, Nikon lenses, Canon FD, M42, Konica lenses, Minolta lenses. You can essentially adapt any lens to this that you'd be able to adapt to a newer Canon RF mount camera. But in terms of Canon killing off this mount for first party lenses, yeah, that really sucks. You know, they really got everybody into this mount into all these great cameras like the M50 is a fantastic camera. The M6 and M6 Mark II, fantastic cameras. The EOS M with Magic Lantern, an amazing camera. It's really picking up a lot of popularity over the last couple of years. And then they just kill off this mount. It really sucks. It's really annoying. So I definitely 100% agree with that. It sucks that Canon just killed off this mount and there will no longer be Canon lenses for it. But again, you can pretty much adapt most other lenses to this, just like if you had a Canon RF mount. And in terms of it being cheaply made, awful touch screen, yeah, it's definitely cheaply made. Once again, this is a beginner Canon camera. This was released by them to be a budget camera, just like the Canon M50. It doesn't have very good build quality. It's fully plastic. If you drop this thing, it's probably gonna break. I mean, 100%, the build quality is not great on this camera.
Let's see what else to say. Touchscreen and battery. The touchscreen, it's not a flip screen. You know, it doesn't move around. It's just fixed on the back. That really sucks for viewing angles. I agree with that. If this had a flip screen, it would be so much more usable. So I definitely agree with that. In terms of the touchscreen itself, I mean, you can go through the menus. You can adjust stuff with it. I have no issues with the touchscreen itself. But I definitely wish this did have a flip screen or something like that. And then small battery. That is also very true. This has an absolutely tiny battery. I would recommend using a dummy battery and then powering it with like a V-mount battery or like a Sony NPF battery something a lot bigger because this battery does not last very long. Um, I might say you can probably get about an hour out of one of these. All right, last but not least, this is another very popular comment I've gotten on these videos and that this camera is not $200 anymore. So that is sadly becoming true. This camera's gotten so much more popularity over the last, I'd say year even, and even more in the last like six months. This camera's really been getting just so much attention. There's been a lot of people making videos about it. There's also a really popular Facebook group about Magic Lantern on the EOS M and it has been gaining a ton of popularity just because of how neat of a camera it is that you can pick up for so cheap. It can just fit right in your pocket. It's so tiny and that you can record raw video with this. So 100%, the price has been going up. I mean, it's an old camera. There will never be any more of these ever made. So pretty much what there is out there right now is what there's always gonna be. So, you know, if, if more people start making content about this, more people start learning about it, the price is gonna go up. And I really apologize for that if I did have anything to do with it. You know, I don't know if I directly did personally I don't want to say I did, but you know, of course, all the people making videos about this camera is going to draw more attention to it. And yeah, that is definitely true. I mean, this has been going up, you know, back a couple of years ago, you could probably pick it up for a hundred bucks, maybe 150 bucks. Then it kind of started going up to around 200 and it's kind of stuck around there. Now you can still find it around $200 sometimes. Like if you're always checking eBay, always checking for new listings, I have seen them for some pretty good prices or even like 250 to $300 with a lens and you can go ahead and sell the lens for like a hundred bucks. But yeah, 100%, it looks like this is trending up in price and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or two, it's around that $400 price point. So yeah, I, I really wish there was a way to counteract that. I wish, I don't know, it'd be crazy if Canon produced more of these. I don't know, that's never gonna happen. I mean, we're all just hoping and dreaming there. But yeah, definitely the price is gonna continue to go up if more people start using this and Magic Lantern keeps expanding and evolving as a community and a software and everything like that. I wouldn't be surprised if this kept going up in price. And so that's it for this video. I hope this addressed any comments and concerns you had about this camera. But that's it for me. Go down and hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and check out any other videos I made about this if you haven't already. And that's it for me. I will see you in the next video.